Previously on Velma. Another thing the government does that makes me angry is the government pooped my pants this morning. <laughs> yes, we're back once again with Velma. Who's ready to lose a few IQ points? What do you mean you've got none left from the last episode? How do, how do you still have the intelligence to find this video? A light from the sky guided you here. Well, sounds pretty legitimate. Well then, since you're here, allow me to share my final thoughts on season one of Velma since the finale aired just yesterday, which means I've got a little bit of catching up to do. I've got episodes five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 to watch. That's six episodes, one after another. So you know that thing when you text your friends and they don't text you back, so it feels like you're gonna die? <laughs> Am I right, kids? Ah, oh, I could do this. I could do this. Wait until you see how much pizza I eat. I can eat three slices. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even trying to write at this point. Is this Mindy's idea of what dorks talk about? It, it, it is the joke that that's not a whole lot of pizza. Now, please cue the clip of some of the laziest exposition I've seen possibly today. Exposition, I've said this many times, is about as lazy as it comes. I can't stand exposition at the best of times. But the, she picks up a picture of her mother's and begins to just say out loud in some sort of Shakespearean manner exactly what she's going to do that episode. Thank you for telling us, Daphne. Cue the clip. I'm going to the Crystal Mines and I'm not coming back until I figure out who I am and where I come from. Or six. Our moms are home by six, so I'll be back before then. You know, often when someone writes for a children's show or at least something that's aimed towards a younger audience, they'll often try and slip in jokes and references for, you know, the, the, the older audience who are often taking their children to see whatever it is. This... However, it's the complete opposite of whatever that is. This is a show that's aimed towards adults and the writers are, at every opportunity, are trying to sneak in references and jokes designed specifically for lobotomized five-year-olds. Oh, it's fine. Bats are just flying rats. Ah! Ground bats! Yuck! Do you see what I mean? Anyway, Velma's uh, best friend gets a girlfriend and, of course, she is as supportive as you would imagine she would be. Now you have Gigi to talk about boring stuff like your swords and feelings. You have gone too far this time, mortal. You can make fun of me because I am a man. You can make fun of me because I am white. But don't you dare bring swords into this. You will feel my swift vengeance. Okay, for real. I started working with uh, Ravenforge and I put my affiliate link down below. And one of my viewers uh, obviously clicked on that link, uh, spoke to the guys and said, hey, could you send Johnny uh, a sword and shield from The Legend of Zelda? Uh, which they did do, and here it is. Well, here's the sword, at least. The shield is hanging on the wall just over there. Uh, they wish to rem remain anonymous. Whoever you are, thank you very much. It's possibly the most thoughtful gift I've ever received. Whoever you are, thank you very much. That's incredibly thoughtful. Quick, make me laugh like Norville would have. I, I would, but all I can think of right now is the gender pay gap. Is it funny? Women make 20% less than men, and women of color even less? <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Uh, <laughs> Are they being serious about this? Or are they making fun of it? Because at this point, it, it's it's one of those. It's so, you know, self-aware and self-referential. I can't tell when they're making fun of something or whether being genuinely serious about something. Either way, did you ever, did you ever think you would see Scooby-Doo characters talking about the gender pay gap? <laughs> is, this, is this really the avenue for those conversations? If I can separate reality dating shows exploitation of women from my obsessive need to watch them. Oh, come on now, reality TV exploits everyone, it's not just women. That's the idea. You take a bunch of mouth breathers who need a bit of money, you put them all in one room, you exploit them for entertainment, and boom, you got a successful reality TV show. In fact, I would go as far to say as we don't exploit people enough for working class entertainment. We want more exploitation of the mentally feeble for our televisual entertainment purposes. Thank you. Hey, don't eat that! That's baking soda, you filthy animal! <laughs> but you don't have any food! <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so far, we've learned that Mindy thinks that dorks eat small amounts of pizza, but la large amounts of baking soda. <laughs>
<laughs> I am genuinely getting to the point where I, I believe wholeheartedly that I could pass for a TV writer. I mean, what, what do you need to get that job? You, you, just not to be dead. Okay, they eat furniture now as well. Oh, of course they, of course they do. This is, this is what dorks do, didn't you know? An immersion band sleepover without food is like a theater sleepover without horny undertones. Nice simile. I'll do it. No, Norval. I told you if you do any more simping for her, we're through. Oh my God. They actually did write him as a simp. It, it wasn't a joke. He called the program the Special Covert Operations Brain Initiative, or Scooby. Scooby? And wait, what did Scooby do? Well, it can't get much worse than that, can it? Velma, what are you doing up there? I'm doing what every girl is doing up here. I'm just trying to get my dad's attention. And one day it will work. Velma, stop. You have my attention. I stand immediately corrected. A high school girl pole dancing for her father's attention. That's a new one. That, that's a new one. Ah! Amanda, where are you? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> now, remember, children, making a mother feel like her newborn has just been kidnapped is funny. Just remember that. My dad has taught me to be a beta, so I'm working on power moves. <laughs> beta. So, Velma's been dressed like a guy for most of this episode because of reasons. But anyway, now that she looks like a man, she slowly starts to realize and come to terms with some of the struggles that come with being a man. You know, responsibility, identity, masculinity. It's I'm just joking, by the way. Uh, everything all of a sudden becomes very easy and everyone listens to her now because that's how being a man works. Holy crap. No wonder men are so desperate to hold onto their power. This is the easiest shit ever. As a guy, I can do anything. So I say, lady, I'll give you the parking spot when you stop being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I think I think there's a little bit more to male comedy than women. Am I right? And also, no, you can't get away with anything just because you're a man. It's, it's quite the opposite. Uh, in fact, and... I feel like maybe there's a profound statement to be made somewhere within the messaging of this episode. But uh, the bit about male comedy, it's not particularly nuanced or indeed very funny. So that's the one thing it needed to be in order for that point to connect. And they couldn't even do that. So uh, instead, it, it's just further cementing archaic stereotypes. Why do I think about this show? Why am I still talking about it? Why are you here? Well, it just goes to show that if you have a cause worth fighting for, you can always count on Mindy to completely undermine you and drag you right back to where you started. Thank you, Mindy. And then, yes, cue the montage of things that Velma can now do now she looks like a man. Oh, come on, let's face it. If you had a man and a woman individually wipe their painted backsides on a canvas, I, I think we all know which one is more likely to sell, don't we? Spoiler alert, it's not the one, it's not the guy who wiped his ass on a canvas. I know some people write this off as like, oh yeah, but this, this section was just a, a daydream. First of all, spineless. Second of all, it's the equivalent of me saying, imagine if I called you a dumb bitch. I'm I'm not go I'm, I'm not going to call you a dumb bitch. I would never call you a dumb bitch. But imagine if I did call you a dumb bitch. It's like, yeah, okay, okay. indirect maybe, yeah. But you're still trying to make a point. I get it. I'm so sorry, Daphne. Ugh, I'd punch you if men didn't sexualize women fighting. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, what? We do what? We we sexualize a whole lot of things that that aren't, you know, breastfeeding women, the French. But uh, women fighting? <laughs> I've never heard that one before. I have never, like, you know, oh, whenever, whenever me and the boys watch the UFC, it's all calm until the women start fighting and then we all just start beating off in, in tandem in a big circle. What? Have you met a man before? Can you describe one to me? You going from Daphne to Velma is worse than going from a beloved cartoon to a playful reimagining. Firstly, yes, the show does continue to be self-aware to the point that it is both physically and emotionally painful. But secondly, a playful reimagining. Playful reimagining. You're going to call Velma a playful reimagining. Mm. You can't use beloved characters 
as puppets to spout insufferable political opinions that lack any form of nuance under the guise of comedy and then call it a playful reimagining. You can playfully reimagine these nuts. Okay, that was not a clever joke, but it was a necessary one. Okay? Sir, if we don't pull these kids out right now, they won't live through the night. That's a risk we'll have to take. Fred Jones, the son of a wealthy white family, has gone missing. All local units are being diverted to the search effective immediately. Sir, when I became a helicopter rescue person, I took an oath. And I'd rather die than break it. Hey! Have any of you seen Fred Jones? What? No. <laughs> okay, I will give it to him. That bit did actually make me chuckle a little bit. So far, that's eight episodes, and I've found two jokes funny. <laughs> that's pretty good. 99% of the time, yes. Hey, no offense, but can we just let the actual doctor explain? Just being a white guy with a clipboard doesn't cut it anymore. Yes, it's about time we put down a white guy. It's been a minute. Look, I feel like I shouldn't need to say this, but white men who aren't doctors don't go around stopping other doctors from doing their job so that they may attempt to do the doctor's job for them. We don't steal clipboards. Sure, there might be, you know, there's a whole bunch of people, like doctors have a real trouble with people like either giving diagnoses or suggestions and people saying like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Or like, no, nah, is there another way? Can I do it like this? Sure. We don't go around stealing clipboards and pretending to be doctors. What do you think a white guy is? And she said, can we let the actual doctor explain just being a white guy with a clipboard won't cut it anymore. Mindy, who have you been seeing for your medical needs? If you just ask a random white man with a clipboard for his medical opinion, you will end up with an opinion that probably isn't very good. This, Mindy, is why we go and see a doctor. What are you talking about? Now I can assure you that this isn't copium, but I couldn't get the rest of episode nine to work. For the life of me, it just would not work. I tried every avenue I could to watch this episode and I couldn't. I don't know if this is a conspiracy. I don't know if there's something in this episode they didn't want me to see or what, but I could not get it to work. And after about half an hour of trying, I just gave up. And we're moving straight on to the final episode. <sighs> I mean, how bad could it be? So, uh, yeah. After all that, it turned out my mom wasn't kidnapped by the serial killer. Apparently, she was the serial killer. So, it turns out that Velma's mom was the killer all along and she's been removing people's brains, which is an ironic twist because the series Velma has been making people voluntarily remove their own brains. Got him. Okay, the next item on the block is this 1969 van, recently used by Dia Dinkley, one of America's only female serial killers. This is easily the weirdest line of the show so far. I mean, look, I know that this is set in a fictitious parallel universe cartoon version of America, but it, it does constantly make references to the real world as we know it. Now, this line makes it sound like there's maybe one or two, or maybe just one, American female serial killer. Well, here's an A to Z list, and it's fair to say there's more than a couple. My personal favorite being Dorothy Williams in parentheses serial killer. Nice. Now, I know that this is supposed to be a jab at men, but it just comes off as American female serial killers aren't that bad. Bit of a weird flex there, Mindy. It's, that's, that's a little bit weird. See you in hell, if I ever visit from the halls of Mandos. That's a Tolkien reference, which I know you hate. Well, damn. That one voicemail from Velma was more accurate to Tolkien's work than the entirety of Rings of Power. Goddamn. Now, come on, you can't actually think that they'd make Velma's mum the villain of this show. That'd be too interesting. What are you, crazy? No, everyone was hypnotized and it was Fred's mum the whole time. Woo, I, I know, I know. You'll never guess how they stopped her. So, uh, you know, she fires a gun. Norville then, then swings in on a rope and he's got a sword on his back and he, he swings his sword and hits the bullet back towards her, but it doesn't hit her, it hits a stalagmite above her head uh, and causes it to break and then the stalagmite falls on her and kills her. I'm joking, of course, that'd be completely ridiculous. Um, no, actually, that's not. No, I, that was a double joke. I was joking about the joke. That is, that's actually how it finishes. That, that's how they do it. Well, it appears I've gotten away with it, you meddling kid. And that's it. That's how it ends. It's it's easy to say that is one of the worst shows I've ever seen. It had, uh, you know, a little respect or understanding for 
what came before it. And indeed, it had little respect or understanding of, of its audience. It was made specifically for the pleasure of those who made it. And that, that, if, if, you're, you know, if you're making a painting or a sculpture, great, fantastic. Indulge yourself all you like. But if you're using something well-established and beloved, you know, and something that relies on people to consume it for it to succeed, it, it, that's that that approach isn't going to work, and that's how you end up with one of the worst rated shows of all time. And look, maybe I'm just a big baby, but uh, the show seemed to have a, just just a little bit of a white problem. It didn't seem to like white white people very much, and you know, minorities have been generalized and used as comedic punching bags in the past. But addressing this by generalizing white people and using them as a comedic punching bag is <laughs> it's maybe not the best way to go about it you're, you're, you're meeting ignorance with the, the very same ignorance you know an eye for an eye makes everyone stupid as gandhi famously said it comes across in a way that you, you're not trying to talk about an issue or solve an issue you, you're just trying to be mean also one thing i do want to recognize is that talking about this show paid my bills last month there's no two ways about it this, yes, this may be one of, if not the worst show I've ever seen, but it's it's made my life better. I benefited from it. Like, I have this, like, weird fondness when I watch it. Like, even though I feel this show doesn't like me because of who I am, I'm not, I'm not filled with rage when I watch it. You know, I'm not slamming my keyboards with clenched fists. It's awful. This is, ter this is legitimately awful. It's, you know, lazy writing, self-aware to the point that it might cause self-harm. It's disrespectful. It's painfully unfunny and ultimately has no business being a Scooby-Doo show. But even then, it's made my life better. How could I hate it? it you know, it's like someone punching you and handing you a salary. It's like, uh, ow, but I, I, I guess I could deal with that. <laughs> like, I, guess, I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but it's a really weird dynamic. It's like, it's the worst show I've ever seen, but I, I don't know. I, I get a lot of fun from making these videos and sharing them with you and... I also benefit financially. It's 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 a weird situation, but uh, it is what it is. I really hope you enjoyed this little uh, expedition through the uh, season that was Velma, and I hope you can join me for my next video that will be coming very soon. But in the meantime, subscribe, you bitch. I am now working with Raven Forge, the people who brought me my beautiful master sword. If you are looking for props from your favorite video games or movies, do go check the first line in the description below. They support me on this channel, so if you could go and support them, I would be much appreciative. The quality is outstanding, the prices are brilliant, and the guys really love what they do, so uh, you'll be getting a great service. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, go hit the first link in the description below and do take care of yourselves. Thank you very much. And as always, a big shout out to my top tier members, Pozzabon, Flunky, Jax, Brennus, Jindra, Koss, Texas, Lawman, Infinite, Dum Dum, ATS and David, the Knights of the Realm. I was gonna say of my realm, but that uh, that kind of sounds like my anus. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, tier two: Steve the Goat, Doctor Melsky, Saeed, MG Virgil, Kuno, Sakura, Mark, Maiden, Sensei, Fang, Michael, Tipia, Hadzu, Yamwich, Mendicant, Bias, Dagger, D69. Nice. Michael, Jason, Coward, Saint Nemo, and Ken. Welcome, my good sirs, to the second tier. And of course, uh, a big shout out to all of the tier one members as well. And we're also welcoming Ivan. I knight you, Sir Ivan of Law. Welcome to the tier one, my friend. Uh, yeah, thank you to each and every one of you. And again, a massive thank you to whoever it was that sent me the uh, sword and shield. Uh, that is unbelievably generous. And there we go, another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do, you little bitch. But until then, take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you real soon.